All right. Uh, my name is Dion Davis. This is the Dion Sh Davis show called Positivity is the Way to Go. Uh, my guest today, he do music. He's in the music industry. Uh, he do songwriting, creativity, and a, he's a creative lifestyle coach. Welcome my guest today, John Chisholm. Hey, Dion, it's so good to be here on your show, man. I just believe in positivity and believe in what you're doing, man. So thanks for having me on. Well, it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, he's about to uh, perform uh, one of his uh, hit songs. So, you know, and, uh, and then, uh, so let's get started uh, with the with the interview. Uh, can, non, can non musicians be creative people? Absolutely. In fact, you know, we have a company and it's called Nashville Christian Songwriters. And I've been working with songwriters for 35 years now. And what I've found, Dion and everyone listening, is that creativity is really more of a mentality, just like positivity is, right? Um, we can have very positive mindsets like uh you know just to to be a, a positive person a friendly person a loving person a kind person or we can have very negative mindsets you know being angry and and uh, uh mean-spirited and creativity is really the same kind of thing I, I what i teach and i actually just taught a, a class on this last week uh, over Zoom for a group in uh, the UK, and it was actually on creativity during times of crisis and quarantine. And creativity is a mindset. Creativity is a decision, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a student or a mom or a dad or, or whatever you are, you can choose to live a very creative lifestyle. You don't have to be a musician or a songwriter to be creative. I think that's that's kind of a, a, a an urban myth, right? That we have is that you have to be a musician or a sculptor, sculptor, or an artist of some type to be creative. But that's not true. You can be an accountant and be creative. Of course, you want to be careful not to be too creative in accounting. But you could actually live a very creative lifestyle and love beauty and love all of God's creation in a very unique way. And, and just, you know, make creative decisions, make, uh, make everything creative, make, you know, cooking dinner or where you're going to go out to dinner or how, you know, how you're going to dress or how you're going to think. It, it really is about a lifestyle of creativity and not just being a musician per se. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's why I try to keep that positive mindset because the way the world is, people are becoming mean and everything, but you got to stay positive and you got to love people. You know, you, like God say, you got to love the unlovables. And you know, sometimes Dion, I'm the unlovable one. So I want people to love me even when I'm not being the best. You know what I mean? So um, absolutely. It's about showing God's love to every creature uh, whether you agree or disagree or, or understand or are afraid, you know, that's a lot of what's going on in the world. It's just a whole lot of fear. So, yeah, and there's a lot of biased people, you know, people got an agenda against one person, like the odds of like people treat one person better than the other one. Like God say, you're supposed to treat everybody equally. You're supposed to treat everybody the way you're supposed to want to be treated. Absolutely. The golden rule. Okay, so what do you mean by living a creative lifestyle? I believe that you can approach everything in life with a certain kind of um, ingenuity and excitement and joy that makes even things you don't want to do a lot more fun, uh, you know, to to approach when, when you say creative you know that has certain connotations but what i mean by that dion is approaching something with a different attitude that brings it life that you can pay bills with creativity you can pay bills with joy 
you know, being thankful that you've got the money to pay the bills, you know, and that's creative for a lot of people because we're taught such negativity uh, that we miss the opportunity to be filled with joy and to approach something differently to, you know, to instead of complaining about what we do or need to do or must do any given day in our jobs or going to school. I know you've recently graduated. Uh, congratulations on that. Um, it's it, it's looking at life in a, in a way that brings it more joy and brings it to life. Um, I was going to make a statement about um, you know, the things that you have to do in a, in a, like go to work in a day, you know, to approach it with joy is a very creative act because if you're used to grumbling and complaining and being mad about the fact that you've got to go to work, you know, what if you started with being thankful that you have any kind of job at all and being thankful for your boss, being thankful for your coworkers, being thankful for the opportunity to just make a difference even to one person around you. You know, when I go into a grocery store or stop at Starbucks or go in anywhere, you know, the first thing I always want to do is try to make the person helping me smile. If I can do that, if I can, if I can just ask them, how's your day going? And, you know, if, if they're kind of down, I always try to crack a joke, you know, I always try to be funny. And, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because I'm kind of a corny old guy. But, <laughs> you know, sometimes I can get a laugh out of somebody and then I can leave them better than I found them. And that to me is creativity. That to me is approaching life with a different kind of attitude. So let me try to sum it all up and say a creative lifestyle to me means approaching life uh, with the attitude of making a difference and to make, leave, leave the world better than you found it. That's creativity to me. Yeah, because I got a story. I was on a, I was on a train uh, in Chicago, and there was this lady. She didn't know where to go, and I was telling her that God is with you. You're not alone at all, you know, because a lot of people don't think God, a lot of people uh, don't uh, want to hear about God, you know. Because I talk about God and I get backlash uh, where I'm at in the city and everything, you know, and it's crazy. Yeah, well, I think we have to meet people where they are, you know, and sometimes it's for me, this is my opinion, uh, sometimes for me, helping somebody to laugh brings them closer to God than me preaching at them and telling them about God. If I can be a little bit of Jesus to them in that moment, then that can sometimes just help them to feel a little bit of God's spirit and maybe make them curious. Yeah. Uh, so how does creativity affect my daily life in business? Your daily life in business or and business? And business. In business? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that, of course, I'm what I've learned and we've had our company, Nashville Christian Songwriters, for um, going. We're in our sixth year. And when I started uh, this business, it really um, was I mean, our purpose is to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. And we, we've done that. We've been able to create a podcast. Uh, just like you're beginning yours, we have about 150 episodes and we've had about 130 or 40,000 downloads, which is, you know, for not knowing what we're doing, it's pretty fun, you know, to see that happen, have a few thousand downloads every month. And I've been able to interview a lot of popular Christian artists and songwriters and people behind the scenes. And the part that surprised me, because I'm very highly developed in songwriting and in music, that's been my background for 35 years, and writing songs, being a publisher, working with songwriters. So I was very confident in my creativity in that area, because uh, after so many years of working on it, it, it comes naturally and easier to me. But what didn't come very easy to me that I've learned is that marketing 
takes a lot of creativity to win the right to serve people, right? I mean, because we have programs, we have a membership you can join and pay monthly or by the year. Uh, we have events that people can come to. And we also have a premium coaching program. So it, you know, it's a pretty expensive program. And it's an eight week intensive training program where we're working with songwriters to help them move from amateur or aspiring to more uh, pro level songwriting. So the surprise for me, Dion, has been that my business requires creativity, not just the songwriting side. And what I've learned that I can draw on the same uh, place in my heart and my mind creatively to put together a social post or to write a blog or to write an email that would help people understand that we're, yes, we're here to be a business and make money or, or I can't afford to do what I do. But the deepest reason I do what I do is to serve them. So every dollar I spend on Facebook ads or every minute, you know, we spend on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. It has to be with creative uh, ideas, with uh, uh, a sense of how questioning, kind of sense of asking the question inside, how can I best connect? with the audience that I want to connect with, people who are interested in writing worship songs or songs for the radio or songs for their own ministries. You know, we're pretty focused on Christian songwriting. I've worked with some country songwriters, but you know, I'm I'm not your guy for hip hop or you know, <laughs> that's, that's not me, right? I'm an old white guy. So it's like, I'm just not, I'm not gonna be that guy. I don't, I, I mean, I like some of it, I but it's not my genre, right? So um, I'm my targeting is is for a different audience. So I have to be creative. I have to think about that. Does that make sense? I'm trying to answer your question about how does creativity affect business, and that's really that's been the surprise for me because um, it has to be more than me just hiring people to do it. Uh, I have to speak into it, and, and I've, I've got to draw on all those creative resources within me. Yeah, I get, I get, I get what you were saying. Cool. Uh, yeah. How how do you write a great song? Well, that's the million dollar question, buddy. And if I told you, I couldn't let you uh, release the podcast because that's oh, how okay. I, make, I make money. So. <laughs> no, I'm kidding you. You know, for me, a, a great song is one that communicates truth and emotion and something memorable in a very short window of time. Songs are actually getting shorter. I don't know if you've noticed this, but in uh, commercial radio songs are now sometimes under three minutes and you know 25 years ago they were you could you they had to be like three and a half to three minutes and 45 seconds now because they're trying to get more advertising in and people's attention spans are so much shorter two and a half minutes it's almost a whole minute less these days and so you have a short short window to communicate something of value to a listener. And so a song, a, a song that is a great song is one that can reach the largest number of people with the greatest originality, memorability, emotion, not necessarily truth, you know, because people's opinions are people's opinions, but, uh, you know, just um, uh, a song that, in a very concise manner, reaches the greatest number of people and moves them in some way, whether that's emotionally uh, or spiritually or in, in just in some way. So that that's a giant question. And uh, I have, you know, like I said, 150 podcasts. We've got blog after blog. We have videos. You know, we teach and coach 
around that question. I don't know that there's ever going to be one answer to that question because what's great to me might not be great to you and and uh, we have eight billion people on the planet now but uh, but then we do see some songs that last a long 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 time uh, i was teaching a class yesterday for our ncs membership and i was bringing up songs from the 1960s uh you know diana ross and the supreme stop in the name of love you know some motown uh songs and um uh, Beatles songs, you know, like um, um, Yesterday is a huge song for them uh, that, uh, you know, even your generation knows and loves songs that were brand new when I was very, very young. And so I grew up in the in the 60s, and that's the 1960s, not the 1860s. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was I was alive when the Beatles were new. Uh, Elvis Presley was still singing. And, uh, you know, it was uh, the, a lot of those songs are classic, iconic songs. And because of digitalization, even younger generations, like my daughter, who's 28 years old, she loves a lot of songs that were new when I was even younger than her, when I was 15, 16, 17. She uh, loved a lot of that music, which has been interesting to me. But um, uh, so when you ask, what does it take to write a great song? Uh, it, it takes understanding uh, how to put words and melodies together and have a title and a hook that can reach a lot of people. Yep, because one of the songs I like, uh, it's a guy, it's Christian music. Is it says Jesus at the center of it all. Nothing uh, in this world would do. Nothing else matters. Yeah, that's a great song by Israel Houghton, uh, who I, I worked with at one of the companies that I was uh, a publisher for. Um, Israel and I were friends in that time, and I don't see him much anymore. But uh, but yeah, great great song. Yeah, because none in this world will do it all. None in this world matters. All this, we just passing through, you know. That's right. That's right. Uh, so why are people doing what they want to do and not following uh, God? Well, you're asking some really giant questions, Dion. Dude, man, I, I should have been more prayed up for this interview knowing you were going to ask such big questions. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, according to the to the Bible, uh, you know, man has a sinful nature. And uh, when we as human beings are not uh, focused on God and surrendered uh, to him, then the result is a lot of darkness and a lot of pain. And uh, what uh, the Bible calls sin, which is anything that's not love, anything that is moving in the opposite attitude or spirit of love is something that takes you away from God and from God's will and and uh, you know kind of cuts us off from a sense of God's presence and so um, you know the, the, there's uh, philosophers and uh, uh, believers have been asking that question for as long as there have been human beings but according to the Word of God uh, it's all about that sinful nature that has to be redeemed. It has to be surrendered to God and then redeemed. So that's about as close to a why as we're going to get to that question. Okay, well, it was, it was a great answer. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, why do Christians and God's people get uh, treated bad and face backlash on earth? Well, again, you know, the even Jesus said that, you know, the servants are not going to be treated better than the master. And uh, in, the, in John chapter one, it says that, that even when Jesus came, the world didn't recognize him. And so, you know, Christian believers, those who follow Christ are, uh, there are many, many of us, of course, but uh, there will always be persecution of the church and you can there's vast amounts of history historic uh, seasons where the church is more 
persecuted than in other seasons. Uh, but it's it's just it just goes with it, you know. Uh, the world, the world as a system, the world as uh, a kingdom of darkness in so many ways hates the light and hates the truth. And so they're going to reject anyone that represents Christ, who is the light and who is the truth. And you're asking some giant questions, dude. Wow. You know, you, you needed a theologian on the show today. Uh, so, well, my mom, I think the truth should be heard no matter what, because the truth, the truth will set you free. You know, the truth may hurt, but you somebody got to tell you the truth, you know. Sure. And I got, uh, is there room for uh, my faith in mainstream music? You know, just yesterday, I watched an hour Facebook Easter concert with Carrie Underwood. And Carrie is one of the greatest country music artists, you know, ever. She's amazing and uh, she's got her start on American Idol. And um, she did an hour of old hymns and uh, just as i am softly and tenderly um so many other great you know classic hymns and she's at the top of the game in country music and people respect her for her faith uh so yeah absolutely you know all of her music isn't gospel music uh, she has now done this gospel album called my savior and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be very well received because people allow for that. And I, I think there's more uh, room for faith in mainstream music. Uh, you listen to uh, even Justin Bieber, whether you agree with him or think he's, you know, a real Christian or not. You know, he has faith overtones in his music now and has been hanging around with some of the Hillsong uh, believers from uh, Australia, some of the pastors there. Uh, Hillsong Church, and I work with a uh, very uh, well-known and um, successful mainstream producer here in Nashville, and uh, he works with some very, very big, big names, and he's a strong believer, and he's just right out there with his faith, and all kinds of people use him because he's a great producer, and nobody's asking him to deny his faith or to be any different than he is. And he doesn't ask them to change. He just loves on them and works with them and helps them produce the best music that they can together. And um, in fact, I have, a, I have a podcast with him. His name is Sal Oliveri. I've known Sal for 25 years. And uh, I, you can find it on our website at nashvillechristiansongwriters.com. And it is that very subject about faith in mainstream music and how he operates uh, as a believer, even within mainstream music. Yeah, music is a uh, music is uh, the gospel. Like Mary J. Blige, she another uh, gospel singer, right? Uh, Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I know her mainstream music. Uh, you know, a lot of people get their start uh, in mainstream. They get their start in the church. Um, in fact, um, John Legend was talking uh, the other night on The Voice about getting his start in church. Um, uh, so many people, you know, started their, their singing in church. Dolly Parton, a great country. Yeah, artist. I remember her. I know who you talking about. And so, so many artists, um, black, white, all kinds of artists, uh, even if though they're in the mainstream, got their start in church music. So the church is very important. And uh, in fact, a lot of Motown artists um, back in the day got their start in church. And a lot of black gospel music has been very influential in music, music biz business, mainstream music, you know, throughout the years. Yeah, and and another and another thing that's powerful is I like the uh, the the phrase uh, "live by faith, not by sight." Yeah, mm -hmm. Cause a lot of people in the world live by sight, with like physical attraction and all that stuff. You know, objectivity and materialism. 
materialism, but it I don't care about material stuff, you know, as long as I got a roof over my head, clothes to wear, shoes, and food on my table and everything, that all that matters to me at the end of the day. Well, that's very good. And and to show the love of Jesus in some way to someone every day is really important. Because I was like this when I was younger too. I, I didn't care about material stuff, you know. God all God bless God bless you with those things, you know. You don't have to worry about it. Because mm -hmm. God is the deliverer. Mm -hmm. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. Yep. So uh, he's uh, he John Chisholm is he's going to play another one of his hit songs today, uh, and uh, it was it was uh, great having you on the show today, man. Uh, you do a great job, and I I like that I, I like your music and everything, and I think you do a wonderful job. And keep up the good work. Thanks, Dion. God bless you and your podcast. Stay positive, everybody, and we'll see you next time.